Hey, what's up? Todd with Shutterstock here, and I'm back with some more After Effects tips. So this is part two of this series. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend checking out part one, especially if you're a beginner. But I'm gonna go ahead and do 10 more tips from my After Effects playbook. These are things that I do all the time in all sorts of different projects. And I did record these over the course of like a holiday break. So you'll notice my shirt might change and I might be a few holiday cookies heavier by the end of it. Let's get into it. This text looks like it could have that kind of wiggly, hand-drawn, frame-by-frame animation kind of look to it. And that's really, really easy to do. So we're going to select our text element and we're gonna to go to Effect, Distort, and we're gonna select Turbulent Displace. And so that's gonna do some pretty wacky stuff. It almost has like a bit of a psychedelic feel and that's obviously not exactly what we want. But with a little bit of fine tuning, this is gonna work. So I'm gonna to go to the size. We're gonna turn that way, way, way down, probably. Let's try 10, and then what we'll do is play with the amount. So now it looks almost like ghosty. So we can turn the amount down. If you play with the evolution, you can kind of test how it's gonna look, and that looks pretty good to me. And now what we need to do is kind of have it animate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start the stopwatch for evolution, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the page down key about, let's try maybe two times, and I'm gonna drag this slider over quite a bit. And then we're gonna do it again, two times, drag it two times. Basically just repeat that process for a good chunk of time. And once you have a few keyframes created, you can check how many you've made by selecting your text element, hit the U key. So we have this, I'm gonna just kinda of clean this up a little bit. So now we have this and we can just go ahead and copy, paste. And copy, paste, paste, paste. We have about five seconds, that's enough for me. And now what we can do is select all of these keyframes. We're gonna right click and select toggle hold keyframe. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it where it doesn't animate between the frames. It's gonna basically just have like little still shots of each keyframe. So it's gonna look more like the hand-drawn frame by frame animation style. And so there you go, real quick, you have that nice kind of you know, jittery hand-drawn animation style. All right, now I'm gonna teach you how to sequence layers really easily. Now this is a trick that you'll use for various reasons a lot. So we have the solid and we have, let's say we have this many copies of it and we want them to kind of play out and then go to the next one, play out, go to the next one. Again, this happens a lot with photos or if you have a specific animation and this also works with things that have keyframes or anything. So if you have one thing fading into the next, again, like a slideshow or something like that, this is really, really handy. So the way that you can sequence these automatically without having to go and you know spend all this time dragging one and making sure it lines up, etc. All you have to do is from the top, and again, it will do it in the order that you have them selected. So if you do it from the bottom, it's gonna go this way. If you do it from the top, it's gonna go this way. I'll show you what I mean with that. So with the top layer selected, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna select the bottom layer. You could also hit Command A and that'll select all. And now we're gonna go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, and Sequence Layers. And in here, there are some really cool options for overlap if you want them to kind of cross dissolve between each other again for photos, and you can select how long you want that duration. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and I'm gonna hit okay. And so there you go. It has placed all of these layers sequentially. And again, if you had some keyframes on them, they would retain all of that. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make a kind of bouncy animation. Now there are a whole lot of different little scripts and plugins that you can do and basically just click a button and you're, you're good to go. So uh, check out Ease and Wiz, that's a really good one. Animation Composer, there's a lot of stuff that just kind of automatically does this, but a lot of times I end up just doing it by hand because it's, it's, not, it's not hard or anything. So we have this circle here and I'm gonna make it kind of bounce onto the frame. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start the stopwatch and this is where we want the animation to rest. So I'm gonna move that to about a second here. And now we're gonna go ahead and make another keyframe uh, just by typing zero into the scale properties. So now we have it where it just scales up. And here in the middle, I'm going to create one where it goes past its resting point. So its resting point was at 100%. Let's just put it up to, let's say 100 and, I don't know, 115. All right, so obviously that 
doesn't really work but you know you see the starts of something so what we need to do is kind of add some spring a little pep so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the front keyframe here we're gonna turn it into an easy ease keyframe and do what we've been doing in the speed graph editor just kind of drag that out and do it again on the end so now it's going to be kind of smooth on both sides of the animation so in the middle wink see now we have a nice little bounce and you can actually sort of alter the amount of spring to the bounce by moving this middle keyframe around so if you want it to be really really springy you can move the keyframe up if you want it to be a little bit softer move it back and so there you go you know nice little quick and easy three keyframe bouncy animation all right, so now I'm gonna show you a really quick way to make some floating embers, like a fire's burning. Uh, I come from a trailer editing background, so I spent a lot of time making text slates for like trailers and stuff. So I had to make a lot of fire embers from time to time. So I have this scene here and it's just kind of a, you know, a flickering light down here at the bottom. So we're gonna add some embers to this scene. We're going to right click and we're gonna select new, solid, and black is gonna be okay. And we're gonna go ahead and just set that to add. And now with that black solid selected, we're gonna go up to effect. We're gonna go to simulation and select CC particle world. And I'm gonna drop down this grid and guides drop down and just turn off the motion path, then the grid and also the horizon and axis box. I just don't use any of that stuff. And now we're gonna go into the producer settings and I'm gonna take this producer and we're gonna pretend like there is a fire down here at the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna just kinda, kinda widen it out a little bit and put it somewhere right around in there. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna push it down where the fire would be. And I'm gonna also just take our Z radius right here. That's just kind of the Z depth of the particle emitter. And we're just gonna turn that up. I'm gonna do something like 1.5, let's just, widen our x radius a little bit just so it kind of fills the screen a little bit better and now i'm going to go into the particle settings here and right now it's set to a line type we're going to set that to a faded sphere and another thing that i always do just so that there's already particles established in the scene i'm just going to grab this layer here and i'm going to scoot it forward in time and just extend it so that it's already started creating particles before the scene even begins. And for the birth and death size, I want them really, really small. I'm gonna set those to 0 0.02, both of them. And I also like to turn the size variation up all the way. So we're gonna go into the physics section, and this is where we kind of do all of the fun, cool stuff. First, I'm going to set the animation style from explosive to twirl and I'm gonna set the velocity to like something like 0 0.3, 0 0.31, something like that. And for, for me, the gravity is extremely intense at pretty much any setting. Here we're gonna do negative 0 0.001. Right here in the longevity section, the particles aren't lasting any longer than one second. So all of our particles are kind of dying out pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna turn that up to something like six, something like that. And another thing that we wanna make sure we do for this layer is we're gonna turn on motion blur. So we wanna make sure that motion blur is enabled right here for the comp. And we're gonna to toggle switches until we get these options. And right here, I'm gonna turn on motion blur for uh, that particular layer. And so now we're also going to add just a quick glow effect. So that way we can kind of see it better and it looks like it's actually a fire ember and it's burning. So once we do that, you can see it kind of brings the embers out a little bit more. Whereas before they were kind of small and not quite as visible. And these are all settings that you can kind of alter and play with for your particular scene. And so there you go, I'm pretty happy with that. You could put some text in there and turn it 3D and you know do some cool stuff with the lighting and you have a pretty cool little movie trailer style text slate. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to use animators and repeaters. There's kind of a very underrated part of After Effects that a lot of people don't find out very early on in their After Effects I don't know, career, and it's a really cool feature, especially for beginners. So we have this text layer right here, and if you click on this drop down for that layer, 
you'll see this little button that says animate. If you click on that, you have all of these different parameters that you can add to an animator. So there's position, scale, rotation, skew, all these other sort of things. There's character offset, tracking, spacing. All of these things are going to be animatable using an animator and I'll show you what I mean. So we have this position and now once we have position, we can actually add another parameter. So I'm gonna add opacity. So I'm gonna take the position and I'm just gonna move it down on the Y axis, just like this, just a little bit. I'm gonna take the opacity and I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom. So now what's happened? Well, nothing yet. So we're gonna drop down this little range selector here and we have offset. So I'm gonna drag offset up and now you see what happens. Okay, so letter by letter right now, it's going to kind of fade up and move up on the Y axis because those are the parameters that we set using the position and opacity options. And so now we have a nice little, you know, it's kind of a PowerPoint looking style animation. But a lot of times what I do is I drop down this advanced tab and I change some of these options. So now I'm gonna say based on instead of characters, which is the one letter at a time thing, I'm just gonna say words. And so now the whole word is gonna come in like that. Now, another thing that is kind of similar, but with shape layers, you can, let's just draw a line here. So now we have this line and it's not doing much and it's just a pretty basic shape layer with a line in it. Now we can go over here to this same button. It's not an animator this time. Now we have a lot of shape options. So there's repeaters. So now we can take our line or say if we had a square and we can add squares and it's going to repeat that square. So let's just turn up the repeater. And so now we have, boom, lots and lots of squares. We can come into the transform options, kind of change some of the, see, say the rotation. Okay, some really weird stuff's going on there. So you can play around with that stuff. That's a lot of fun. Another thing that I really like is there's kind of stuff that alters the shape. So there's a twist option and that's a really quick, cool way to, I'm gonna turn off fill here. So if we just have a line, we can use this twist option to kind of make a cool swirly effect, just like that. Or if you wanted to make a zigzag, there's a zigzag option. So let's look at that really quick. So there's zigzag. Now you can take it and kind of make, you know, pretty cool little zigzag shapes. And now I'm gonna show you a trick called orient along path. This is a really good way to make sort of animated arrows or if you had a, plane animation on a map where a plane was flying from one part of the world to another. So first we're gonna grab the pen tool up here and we're gonna turn off the fill. You just click on this little blue fill text here. We'll turn that off. And so right now we just have stroke and let's just make like about a eight pixel stroke here. And I'm just gonna click in here and we're just gonna start making kind of a wavy line. So I'm gonna click and then click again and kind of drag, sort of make a smooth sort of line for our arrow to follow. Let's turn up the stroke on this line a little bit. And so now we're gonna go to back to the pen tool. We're gonna turn fill on and we're going to turn the stroke all the way down. And I'm just gonna draw kind of a triangle and that looks good to me. And we're gonna go ahead and right click on that object. We're gonna go to transform, center, anchor point and layer content. And I'm gonna grab the pan behind tool here and just kind of put that down, try to center it as best as we can. And I'm gonna rotate the object and just kind of try to line it up real nice with our path. So it kind of looks like it's coming off of that path. So what we're gonna do is with the line layer selector, we're gonna to go to this drop down, and we're gonna to go to contents, shape, and we're gonna find the path here. And I'm gonna just click on that right next to the stopwatch and I'm gonna hit command C. And now we're gonna to go to the arrow and I'm gonna hit P for position. We're gonna select it right there make sure our play hits at the beginning and I'm gonna paste it. So now if you look, our arrow is just going to kind of go along that path. Doesn't look quite right just yet, but we'll get there. And so right now we're gonna right click on the arrow. We're gonna to go to transform, auto orient, and we're going to select orient along path and hit okay. So now if you look, it's going to automatically point along with that path but it's actually going backwards from the way I want it. So you can actually just rotate it like so, and now it'll follow the correct way. So I'm gonna go to our final keyframe and we're just gonna easy ease that so it's nice and smooth. And so now we can go to our line layer and in that drop down I told you about before, this add feature, there's one called trim paths. And so what that does is it makes it so where we can kind of start that line at a certain point, in that line at a certain point. And so now we can turn this down all the way at the beginning. So I'm gonna set the end point 
to zero here. And then we're gonna go to the final keyframe where the arrow stops moving and we're gonna set that to 100. And we're gonna go ahead and make that nice and smooth. See, now the arrow follows that path and it animates on together, really nice and pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you how to save animation presets. This is also kind of a really nice feature of After Effects that a lot of people I find don't make use of. It saves you so much time. So for instance, the ember effect that I showed you before, you can just save that and reuse it anytime you want and it'll just be those same exact settings. So here is that same project from before, the embers that we had, and I'm gonna select our embers layer and you just go up to effect controls and right here is our two effects with all of our settings in them. And we're just gonna select those both and go to animation, save animation preset. I'm gonna go to the desktop and I'm gonna just save it as fire embers preset and hit save. And so let's say, let's just go ahead and delete that old solid right there with our embers on it. I'm gonna go right click, go to new solid again, just do everything we did before. And now with our layer selected, let's go ahead and make sure it's on add like it was before. And now with that layer selected, we can go to animation apply animation preset and it's gonna bring up a search dialog and right there is our fire embers preset and we're gonna move this layer forward like we did before and turn on motion blur for that layer and boom, there we go. Same exact look as before, just a couple of clicks. So now I'm gonna show you how I do screen capture animations. You know, the last thing you wanna do is just have a still shot of the you know, the footage of the screen just kind of sitting there. I have a screen cap of me using the Premium Beat website, and so I just captured that with QuickTime, and I'm gonna take that, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it 3D. So there it is, I clicked this little 3D button right here. So I'm gonna right click again in this kind of empty space down here. We're gonna go to New Camera, and we have the camera settings options here. I think 50 is going to be just fine, so we're gonna hit okay. And also, what I always like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a null object. So we're gonna right click, go to new, null object, and I'm going to parent our camera to this new null object, and we also want the null object to be 3D. So now I'm gonna click on our new null object, I'm gonna hit the R key, which is going to bring up our rotation options. And I'm gonna go ahead and on the Y axis, we're just gonna rotate. So now we have this kind of cool parallax effect and I'm just gonna kind of, you know, find something kind of cool looking like that. And I'm gonna take our null object and hit the P key and we're just gonna kind of move things around. Let's see, and we're just gonna kind of find an interesting little point in the video, I'm gonna go ahead and go click on the free downloads button. So we wanna make sure that we kind of show that off, okay? So it's important to kind of look at what the mouse cursor is doing, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our position and we're gonna get really nice and close to that free downloads button. If you drop down this little camera button here and we have the camera options, right here we have a lot of really cool stuff we can play with. First off, I'm gonna turn on depth of field. So I'm gonna click on that little button right there and now we have depth of field and we can actually focus the camera. So I'm gonna take the aperture which is going to kind of alter how much depth of field there is. So now we're getting pretty blurry and we can take the focus distance and kind of shift it around. And we're gonna shift that and you might need to hit the uh, shift key to kind of make it focus a little bit faster. That kind of makes everything move a little bit quicker. And we're gonna focus on the free downloads button. And I'm also gonna take the blur level and we're gonna turn that up however you like it, just whatever looks best to you. So I'm gonna start the position stopwatch here and we're gonna have it kind of dollying into the free downloads button. All right, and so here we go. Here's a really just you know quick and dirty example of what you can do with this. I added a little bit of vignette, a little bit of noise, but this is a really simple way to take a screen capture, add a little bit of a 3D element. It's something that I do all the time. All right, and so now I'm gonna show you how to deal with a super long motion graphics timeline. So a lot of times you'll be doing like an explainer video or something that can be quite a bit longer than just your average, you know, 10 second motion graphic. And in these cases, you're gonna be dealing with voiceover and music and sometimes sound design that you need to animate to certain cues. And in After Effects, it's kind of difficult to deal with audio. So I have this voiceover file right here. I'm gonna drag it to a new composition 
and I also have my music. Now, as you can see, you know, there's no waveform to look at. It's kind of difficult to, you can drop down the, drop down here and look at the audio and that pretty much just allows you to set the levels. You can look at the waveform here, but it's not quite as automatic as it is in Premiere. So with longer timeline projects like this, I prefer to kind of map it out in Premiere first. So we can go here into Premiere and here we have our voiceover and our music in the same timeline. And so what I like to do is kind of map everything out in Premiere and send it over into After Effects one thing at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this new item button here and I'm gonna go ahead and just select color map. You can do black video, anything like that. I'm gonna hit okay and I'm gonna just make a big red kind of solid. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just call that AE replace. So we have music and voiceover and you kind of, you know, sometimes you want to animate where certain things move to the music or to the voiceover, etc. So let's just kind of break it down into like a chunk. So let's just say kind of like this first, you know, 10 seconds. Okay, so now you're thinking, okay, all I got to do is edit this 10 second chunk and then find some way to transition. So I'm going to drop this AE replace little solid here. And then I'm going to make a cut on the audio. And now I'm gonna select all three, which is the voiceover, the music, and our matte layer. And I'm gonna right click and select replace with After Effects composition. And it's going to ask you to save a project. So I'm just gonna, just gonna name it whatever. I'll just keep it untitled project. And so now it's going to open up all of that stuff for that period of time in After Effects. So I can animate to it there. And kind of, instead of having this big long timeline, I can animate in chunks. And what I find that does is it helps me kind of keep moving forward because I'm not looking at this big giant timeline. So usually I just go ahead and just delete that right out of there. And now if you hit the period key, you can, you can play the audio back without any rendering or obviously you can hit the zero key and RAM preview like you always would. And so all the changes that you make are going to dynamically link to Premiere. So that's a, you know, it's a feature that's been around for a while, but this is how I like to do much longer projects. Now I'm going to show you some motion tracking tricks uh, for particularly tricky shots to track. So in this shot right here, this is an old shot from a project I did a long time ago where I was doing kind of a stranger things, you know, upside down look. And I put a bunch of, I don't know if you can see, but I put a bunch of little tracking markers on the wall. I wanted to make sure that there was enough contrast and so that the tracker would be able to perfectly find these walls so that I could add elements to them. Here we are in Premiere. I'm gonna go into After Effects. I'm gonna right click, select replace with After Effects composition. And so here we go. Now we have our shot in After Effects. So what I wanna do is add a ton of contrast to this shot before I track it. So all the little contrasty spots are go going to pop out and really have a massive effect on the track itself. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna go to color correction, curves, and what you'll notice, if I try to do it this way, I'm gonna just add a bunch of contrast. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to motion track this shot for with the 3D tracker. So I'm gonna pop open the tracker here and I'm gonna select track camera. And what it says right here is the 3D camera tracker analysis ignores masks and effects applied in the same composition. So it's going to ignore that contrast that I added. That is a really easy and quick thing to fix. We're gonna click on our object. We're gonna go to pre-compose, layer, pre-compose, and we're going to move all attributes. So now we still have our shot in this comp, but now we've pre-comped it so I can go in here and in this iteration of that layer, I can go ahead and add my contrast. And so now in this original comp, we have no effects on that layer, but in the pre-comp version, we do. So it you know, trickles over and now we have this extra contrast. So now with that layer selected, we can hit track camera. And so after a little bit of waiting, our shot is nice and tracked. And you'll see now I have these all these little track points on the wall. And I didn't show you the before, but before they weren't really showing up properly. So now we have all these nice little tracking points. I can select them all and have it tracked perfectly to this wall. So as always, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I love After Effects. It's probably my favorite piece of software. So if you would like to see some more After Effects tutorials on this channel, I'd be happy to make them. Just let me know in the comments. And as always, subscribe, hit the like button, all that stuff. I'll see you guys next time.